Welcome to Quarantent, a series of light-hearted, low-stakes video essays to distract us all from the ongoing, well, everything. Expect the same kind of research and style as my traditional essays, but a topic that isn't as heavy as usual. This time, I get to focus on something I have always been secretly fascinated by. Emoji. I love emoji. I think about how they came about and how they became incredibly mainstream and a fascinating story. It's a story for another time. But moreover, their development into just a whole new language and way of communicating tone and mood online, it's just... And now there are currently 2,666 emoji, and all of them seem to fall into a few easy categories. Obviously there's the smiley faces, the mappy ones, the symbols, the Japanese ones that have been there since day one, or the flags, including the best two. Okay, best three, the Seychelles flag is kind of wicked too. And the occupations. But there's one emoji that kind of sticks out among the others. This one. Unico refers to this one as man in business suit levitating, but it's known as everything from rude boy to G-man. I've been calling it simply the levitating businessman, which sounds fittingly ominous for such an enigmatic emoji. Sounds like some kind of supervillain, which isn't too far off being a businessman anyway. So where'd this gravity-defying fedora-laden chappy come from? Well, for that, we're gonna have to go back in time a little, then a little more, then maybe around the world if we have time. Remember the 90s, specifically 1998, the time of Save by the Bell and the Paris World Cup and Deirdre Barlow went to prison. I don't know, I was like four years old at the time. But more importantly, this is when the whole emoji thing popped off and it happened in Japan. Well, of course we had things like the smiley face and other sorts of things were made out of pre-existing characters, but it was SoftBank in 1997 who were the first to release a phone, the JPhone DP211SW, that included a set of actual emoji as we know them today, as far as we know by any stretch. And here they are. There's not much to them, they're only 12 by 12 pixels, but this was the first set of pictograms that you could seamlessly slip into an SMS text message. Sure, there were things like Wingdings and other dingbat fonts that had symbols in them, but they were completely separate fonts that needed to be installed on a desktop and weren't compatible on phones. This here is the first set of emoji we have on record. All 90 of them. But notice one that's missing? Our little friend the levitating businessman isn't there. Well, that's because nowadays it isn't just the Japanese phone carriers that get to choose what becomes an emoji. That is decided by the Unicode Consortium, a non-profit organization that maintains the Unicode standard, which aims to create a standard for computers to display basically every single letter, diacritic, punctuation mark, accent, and any other character so that all computers can display, as well as things like page break characters and other such things. And in 2010, they included emoji in Unicode 6.0, two years after Apple included emoji in their phone, which was released exclusively on the SoftBank network in Japan. Because of this, they included the emoji that SoftBank included on their phones, so this original set of 90 emoji from before inspired the Apple emoji that popularized emoji writ large. Then in 2014, Unicode 7 came out, which included our little friend, the levitating businessman. But that loops us back around to the key question of the video. Where'd he come from? Well, for that, we're gonna hop in our time plane and leave 2011 Japan and fly over to 1998 California. In 1998, Windows 98 was released, which included a font known as Webdings. Now, I know I said earlier that Wingdings font didn't count as emoji, but I'm getting there, okay? Webdings was designed as a way to include symbols on websites and documents, and the way they picked symbols was... Mm -hmm. There's an alien face in there, there's a Spider-Man, there's a letter being zapped by lightning. It's, it's, an, it's an odd mix. But they decided that the M key would map to what the original brief decided would be a humanized exclamation point. The team decided this would look like a man jumping, so the shadow would be the dart and the man himself would be the line. And here's where we get to the fun part. Vincent Conair, the man famous for inventing Comic Sans, was put in charge of designing this specific webding. To quote him when he spoke to Newsweek, I had a special Japanese import, and I saw one of the keywords was jump, so I thought it'd be good to make a jumping, pogoing man. That style of the two-tone guy, black and white, it was so graphic, it was so easy to make something into a font like that. It's the fucking Scar guy! Google the word Scar. Go to images. It's that guy! That's Levitating Businessman! He isn't an ominous capitalist at all, he's a pogoing punk! That is cool as heck, right? Fun fact, the Scar guy, whose actual name is Walt Jabsko, is based off a photo of reggae musician Peter Tosh. 
So the most realistic form of the Scar Guy emote, which is what I'm calling it now, is the dark skin tone one. And that wasn't included in Apple's emoji until 2016. But to get back on track, these webdings were thrown into the Unicode standard to ensure that any website that used them wasn't broken in the future, and all the symbols were sort of just thrown in the back with the weird Japanese pixel arts. So when people like Apple and Android wanted to expand their emoji keyboards, they used not only the Japanese emoji of old, but these webdings as well. And finally, the Unicode consortium decided that Skagai was worthy of being an official emoji in 2015 when they launched Emoji 1.0. But everyone interpreted the suit as being a business suit rather than a punk ska look. So we went through this weird transformation of from a rocking pogo punk into an ominous G-man looking dude with a hat. The shades don't really help this look anymore, he goes a little bit men in black looking. So I say we take this weird floaty shareholder and hashtag make it scar guy. He didn't deserve to be the floating face of capitalism. He's a symbol of punk and banging tunes. Make it scar guy. So thanks for watching Quarantine. I hope you enjoyed this chiller, more low intensity kind of thing. I've got a few of these in the pipeline, so we're able to talk about some more chill topics together. If you like this kind of thing, let me know in the comments section. Uh, while you're down there, the like and subscribe buttons are begging to be clicked too. If you're really into Scar, I'm kind of getting into Scar because of the research of this video, so comment a Scar song that I should listen to. And if you really, really like what I'm doing, visit my Patreon and join the cool people on the screen right now. And a special thanks goes out to the fresh cheese bags of this month. Cosmosaur, Carl Rod, Neurotic Anarchy, What Would Jedi Do, Ethan Saffron, and the Magpie Magus. Oh, and a big thanks goes to the Scartoon Network for letting me use the uh, Me Channel Scar cover that you're hearing right now. Go check them out, links in the description below. I'll catch you on the flippity flop. Love you, bye.